Hello, we're Team Mountaineers from West Virginia University and we're proud to present our newest rover design and demonstrate readiness for the 2022 University Rover Challenge. Meet ASTRO, the semi-autonomous system for traversal and research operations. Throughout ASTRO's design process, we utilized a systems engineering approach experienced from previous designs and student efforts from a variety of technical backgrounds. For stability and rigidity, ASTRO's chassis plate is supported by a differential double bogey system. In-hub wheel mounts are paired with 3D printed tires to control the wheel-to-terrain interaction so ASTRO can climb steeper slopes and navigate rougher terrain. The chassis plate allows multiple mission payloads to be quickly interchanged, supporting custom solutions for each mission. Our communications subteam implements a long-range communication system using the 2.4 GHz band that delivers command information to ASTRO and returns data from the payloads to the base station's GUI. Our GUI was made to support individual mission requirements. To improve the robustness of the communication system over long distances, only the data requested by the operators is transmitted over the radio link. For increased redundancy and reliability, the communication system features an automated system to orient the base station's directional antenna to face the rover throughout a mission. A secondary 900 MHz radio also serves as a backup communication link in non-line-of-sight situations. For the extreme retrieval and delivery mission, our design is focused on reliability, strength, and flexibility. Safety checks, such as self-calibration, limited joint angles, and data link redundancy were added to the physical, electrical, and communications systems. Also, the system's emphasis on simplistic design limits failure points. Using cycloidal gearboxes with 420 to 1 gear reduction ratios, the arm is capable of lifting objects greater than the maximum competition weight at full extension. The horizontal cylindrical workspace allows operator flexibility in rover alignment while still being able to reach the objects. A compliant clamping end effector allows the operator to grab irregularly shaped objects. Ease of operation is aided by a flexible control scheme which can transition between inverse kinematics and joint control. For the equipment surfacing mission, precision and ease of control were prioritized. The parallel scarab manipulator arm mounted on a lead screw driven linear lift allows in-plane precision movement decoupled from the vertical movements. The parallel scarab arm moves the manipulator center of mass towards the linear lift to decrease the cantilevered load, reducing deflection and oscillation. Inverse kinematics allow intuitive operator control of the manipulator. Astro's end effector combines a solenoid used to precisely push buttons and type on the keyboard, a hexagonal bit driver used to screw in fasteners, and a gripper used to manipulate the joystick, drawer, and USB flash drive throughout the mission. For the autonomous navigation mission, focus was placed on accurate localization, long-range marker detection, and reliable obstacle avoidance. Astro uses a PixHawk flight control unit to combine GPS, inertial, and magnetometer measurements for a localization solution tested to one meter accurate. Astro uses four cameras that can detect Aruco markers reliably up to six meters away. To reach waypoints, a cost map generated from 3D LiDAR data is used to detect obstacles in the local environment. If a waypoint is reached without detecting a marker, a square spiral search pattern is planned and executed. The science package uses a number of chemical tests as well as visual observations to determine the presence of extinct or extant life. Phalanx solution detects carbohydrates and the catalase test finds oxidizing enzymes, both of which can identify signs of extant life. Finally, Piotrowski's test is used to detect proteins, suggesting either extinct or extant life. A visual light spectrometer and internal camera observe the reactions. To reduce the possibility of cross-contamination, a vacuum system consisting of four separate vacuum tubes is used to transport samples of soil into an onboard laboratory. Peristaltic pumps distribute the reagents to the cuvettes, and the sample centrifuge then separates the particulates so that more accurate readings can be made by the spectrometer. A microscopic imager attached to the linear lift is used to observe the grain structure of rocks which provides insight into the geological history of an area. Team Mountaineers is excited and ready for competition in Utah this summer.